What's going on guys? GH here. It's March 28, 2024. Here's another week of MMO news. This is gonna be quick. Time stamps, guys. Let's not waste any more time. Let's do this. First up, we got some Lost Art news. Yesterday, Lost Art went into maintenance, which got extended due to issues. But when they opened up the servers, all hell broke loose as most players couldn't log into the game. Not really news. It's just another Lost Art maintenance. Now, on March 27th, Lost Art Korea received an update adding a new epic raid. Following the regular maintenance on March 27th, we got some exciting updates in Lost Art Korea. Let's dive into the details. First up, let's talk about the addition of the epic raid, Storm Commander Behemoth. This new endgame content introduces players to the formidable Storm Commander Behemoth who has appeared with the Guardians of Chaos. To challenge this epic raid, players must complete the Southern Kurzan World Quest, Burning Flame of War, and achieve item level of 1640 or higher. It's a massive endeavor, but the rewards are worth it. The raid requires a party of 16 players and can be attempted on normal difficulty. There's more to this Lost Art Korean update like events, general, and quality of life improvements. This is gonna be a fun raid. Let's just hope there's no mechanic wherein one guy makes a mistake and we all die. What am I talking about here? <laughs> of course, there will be one. Next up, PSO2 and GS just previewed their upcoming April update. Let's dive into the details. Kicking things off, PSO2 and GS is teaming up with the iconic anime series Samurai X or whatever you call it in your region. All I could remember from this anime is it's always replay on TV. Yeah, this one is from the good old days. Anyway, prefer for a limited time login bonus featuring life-size cut-up build parts of Kenshin Himura, Kaoru Kamiya, and more main characters. But that's not all. There's going to be new gameplay elements in Le Seal Exploration, Conquer the Sinister Giruva Dolls, in the challenging trial Giruva Diversion, and face off against formidable enemies. In another development, PSO2 NGS introduces all ship matchmaking for Le Seal Exploration, which is much needed because this daily quest is hard to start AF. And I'm glad they're going to fix this problem. Another update we're getting in April is the tech arts customizations with new PAs and balance adjustments for existing customizations. And by the end of the month, PSO2 NGS is rolling out various improvements and new features. Augment capsules can now be directly used as material items in item enhancements, and equipment details have been enhanced for better clarity. And there's also an AC Scratch ticket update, vintage classics, of course, so Sega can get their fix. And they're also gonna add high difficulty quests with the high difficulty quest major target suppression mission planet crusher blitz you can face off against dark falls dalian and earn the new 11 star wing guard weapon series and in april 24 celebrate pso2 ngs third anniversary with a limited time event and changes in all regions and that's the april update for pso2 ngs this is how you update your online game i just wish we get more major updates every year. The next story we have is Netmarble just announced their new dark fantasy MMORPG is coming out soon in Korea. Well, they're not really saying when. According to their website, it's coming soon. Now, a few days ago, they released a new trailer for Raven 2. Yeah, I forgot. The name of the MMORPG is Raven 2. You're watching it right now. And I must say, it looks very interesting. It kind of looks like Diablo. And of course, it's a classic battle between good and evil. And as for the details, Raven 2 is going to be free to play and it will be playable on PC and mobile devices. If you want to watch the full trailer, it's down below. Coming up next, Soul Frame Prelude's Fae Pack is revealed live on stage at PAX East 2024. And as you can see, you can stand in water, watch a wolf drink water, walk towards a tower, pet a beaver. Man, this game is so promising. We can also go Assassin's Creed and go do stealth kills. And play like a samurai, like in that new PlayStation IP, Ghost of Sashimi. I forgot the name. And there he goes. You can find the full video on their website. Can't wait for this game. And in other news, Daybreak Game Company has made an announcement that DC Universe Online is now officially playable on the PlayStation 5. As of March 26, 2024, players have the option to delve into the world of DC UO using the native PlayStation 5 client. Previously, players could enjoy the game on the PlayStation 5 through backwards compatibility. However, the introduction of the native client promises an enhanced gaming experience. Downloading DC UO on your PlayStation 5 is a straightforward process. Navigate to the PlayStation Store, locate DC Universe Online, and select the PlayStation 5 compatible version for convenient installation. Performance-wise, playing on the native PlayStation 5 client offers improvements such as quicker load times, smoother transition, and higher frame rates, leveraging the capabilities of the PlayStation 5 hardware. 
there. Existing players need not worry about compatibility issues. Cross-platform play remains available, ensuring seamless interaction with friends on PlayStation 4 and PC. Furthermore, players' progress, including characters, accounts, and purchases, seamlessly transition to the PlayStation 5 version, facilitating a smooth gaming experience across platforms. This is a decent addition to the PlayStation 5 library, and DC Universe just received a major update a few months ago, so I'm sure trying it out today would be nice. Now, Mad World Age of Darkness in March 22 just received a major update, adding new dungeons, bosses, and more. Let's delve into the details. First up, adventurers can now explore the Mammon Treasure Vault, a brand new dungeon filled with challenges and treasures. This expansive dungeon includes areas like Crushing Ground, Foundry, Treasure Trove, and the daunting Mammon's Room. Alongside these new locales come formidable bosses including Pringo, Kamana, Piresh, and the namesake Mammon. And in this update, players can unlock their potential with the new headstone system, earning up to 98 additional potential points while leveling up. Additionally, convenience features for pets have been expanded across all ranks, enhancing gameplay. Furthermore, a new collection system allows players to collect items or stat bonuses, while the mob system enables the creation of dungeon parties, fostering teamwork and smoother runs. Players can also track their progress with potential dungeons and blackstone chests, and challenge themselves with mastery dungeons. Next MMO news, for those of you who have phones, here is the Diablo Immortal 2024 roadmap. As you see here, Diablo Immortal will be very active this year. In April, players can expect a slew of exciting updates. First up, a new Paragon system will be introduced, offering players a new progression path to enhance their characters. Alongside that, we'll see the arrival of a new equipment, new Heliquary bosses, and a new game mode will be introduced to keep the gameplay experience fresh and engaging. But that's not all. Throughout the year, adventurers can look forward to confronting the Lord of Terror himself in a pair of main quests. And let's not forget the second anniversary celebration where players can reap rewards and bask in the festivities. Next MMO news, Albion Online's update known as Foundations is set to launch on April 15th, introducing a variety of new features and improvements. Among these are fortifications, which serves as upgradable defensive structures for territories, along with siege banners that offer strategic options for both attackers and defenders. Additionally, territory activity chests will provide enticing rewards for territory owners and their competitors. The update also includes the introduction of new crystal weapons featuring powerful spells and a spectator mode allowing creators to broadcast arena battles and tournaments. Are you guys excited for this? Tell me in the comments. Now some quick news on Metin 2. Metin 2 is gearing up to open the gates to 3 new servers on March 28th. And here's what to expect from these new servers. First, engage in a variety of events such as the Plentiful Loot event and Riding Challenge, offering exciting rewards for those who participate. And you can also climb your way to the top of the quest ranking and earn bragging rights along with the exclusive rewards. For the full details, visit the Gameforge website. And in other news, Housing has finally arrived in Adventure Quest 3D. Players can now visit the Battle on Trade District to meet with the build foreman, Bridget, who will guide them through the process of acquiring their very own house. This features allows players to customize their personal space with various items collected through their journey, offering a unique way to leave their mark on the world of lore. And in response to player feedback, adjustments have been made to the Battle on Museum, specifically regarding the number of moments required to create this place across different zones. Additionally, issues concerning certain monsters not dropping moments have been addressed ensuring a smoother experience for all museum enthusiasts. And in other AQ3D updates, Adventure Quest 3D has seen the return of the Clover Crusaders, offering players the chance to earn Clover Leaves for Lucky Day rewards. Additionally, a special drop known as the Prosperity Plunder has been introduced with a drop rate of 7.77% from the Clover Crusaders. And in response to issues with receiving promotional items via mail, a special shop has been set up within the game to ensure no adventurer misses out on limited time items. And there's more, a new contest has been announced inviting players to design a poster for Burger Hero offering a chance for aspiring artists to showcase their talent within the game. Now, Throne and Liberty news, finally! Throne and Liberty has announced its closed beta test scheduled for April 10th, with signups currently open. While the game has been available in Korea since December, details about its release in the West by publisher Amazon Games have been scarce. The MMORPG is set to launch on PC and consoles, though specific dates are yet to be confirmed. The closed beta test marks a significant milestone for the game's Western debut, and it will be accessible on PC, Xbox Series X and S, and PlayStation 5 from April 10th to the 17th, spanning regions including North America, Europe, South America, and the Asia-Pacific. A trailer showcasing gameplay has been released on social media platforms offering a glimpse of the game in action. 
Okay, finally, some news on an Amazon game. Now, Blue Protocol, let's go! Now, in March 20, CEO Phil Frazier and executive producer Jared Fisher and Brett Norton talk about what's coming in Champions Online, Star Trek Online, and Neverwinter. Now, let's start with Star Trek Online. As usual, we're gonna get events, and here is the calendar and events from March to June. And in May, we get a new season. According to this, the name is not finalized, and we get a continuation of the Kings and Queens story arc. One new episode, one new task force operation, and more. So it's safe to say that Star Trek Online will be very active this year. Now, for Neverwinter, it's going to be the same. There are planned updates, they're calling it modules, and in April 2024, there goes the summary. We're gonna get the conclusion of the Sarisian storyline, new wild space landing sites, Bokat's Arena of Blood, the Imperial Citadel Dungeon, and more additional features. Now, this is for April. Now, sometime in 2024, they didn't put a date on it. We're getting more updates like new setting and storyline and more. And as you see here, there's a disclaimer that these are all plans for now and is subject to change. Now, as for Champions Online, we get this. It's for April and March. As I see it, it's only going to be minor updates. According to this, we get new missions, events, and some contests. I'm a little bit disappointed in their plans for Champions Online because this is a good game. I hope this game gets a major update soon. And there goes the Daybreak update. The games are not going away. And some quick news on Torum Online. On Thursday, March 21, a major update was posted, bringing in significant additions to the game. The highlight of this update includes the introduction of new story missions and maps. The latest story mission titled The Great Battle Underwater has been added. Players can embark on this new adventure by moving to Aqua City to Carretera Mar. Accompanying this mission are two new maps, Carretera Mar and Marina Town. This map serves as the setting for the latest story mission, providing players with fresh environments to explore and conquer. Now, just a reminder guys that Pelia is now available on Steam. You can now play this cozy live sim MMO in Lord Gaben's platform. Coming up next, Riot Games' long-awaited MMO project has been revealed to be in a state of reset, with the game not expected to make an appearance for several years. Riot co-founder Mark Merrill provided insights into the development status through a thread on X. Merrill stated that the development team had initiated a reset of the project some time ago. This decision was driven by the realization that the initial vision for the game did not deviate significantly from existing MMO experience. Merrill emphasized the importance of creating an MMO that offers a unique and innovative experience within the Runeterra universe. He acknowledged the high expectations of players worldwide and expressed the team's commitment to deliver a product that represents a significant evolution of the genre. Well, they probably knew the game would have been paid to win as hell to be considered profitable. And most probably a few devs disagreed to this. So things hit the fan. Just my speculation though guys. If there's going to be a Riot MMO, they can't make it pay to win because it's a Riot game. So yeah, we most likely is not gonna see this MMO soon. What do you guys think? Next MMO news, Trove just got an update called Gear Up Date or Gear Up Update. Here are the patch notes. Crystal 5 equipment is now available in Trove. It can be obtained through drops, gear crafting, and gear crafters vault. Gear crafting is a new profession allowing players to craft equipment ranging from uncommon to crystal quality. The crafting process requires various materials including flux, ores, molds, and block elements. The gear crafting forge contains 6 tiers of recipes, each granting different equipment rarities based on power rank thresholds. The crystal tier recipes can rarely award crystal 5 equipment, which can also be obtained through the gear crafters vault. And the Gearcrafters Terminus unlocks recipes for Crystal 2, 3, and 4 equipment once 250 Gearcrafting skill is acquired. Now, the Gearcrafters Vaults can be obtained from crafting recipes found in Uber 1 or higher chests containing equipment and crafting materials. New costume styles have been added to the Chaotic Combinator, and several updates have been made including adjustments to equipment looting, changes to geode modules, and additions to merchants and clubs. Additionally, various bugs and fixes have been implemented. And that's it guys, leave a like, it will help the channel grow, and subscribe if you haven't already. See you guys in game, and this is Gimme Hardcore. See you in the next one.